Hello, Instagram. Still trying to come live on on Facebook. Hello, Facebook. Finally, I'm here. I've been having issues logging in. My cameras are not well positioned, but I don't even want to touch it so that it will not be something else that will happen. Hello, Instagram. Hello, Facebook. Hi, dear friends. Hello everybody. Today is Ask Lawyer Precious third edition for the year 2024. Third edition for the year 2024. And I have a very interesting question I want to quickly respond to because in the next 2025 minutes, I am out of here where are you guys watching from i am live from lagos state nigeria where are you people watching from put it in the comment section hi if you're just meeting me for the first time my name is precious told you don't mind the way my eyes are going from my left to my right i'm looking at both the instagram and the facebook camera at the same time somebody said there's an app i can actually go live on all platforms i am yet to check it out i would really really find pardon me find it helpful or useful what is this thing that is on my head here? A diamond? Where is it coming from? Is it a filter? <laughs> hey, God, have mercy on me. Which one is this one on my head? Facebook people. Can you just remove it? <laughs> okay, guys. If you're just meeting me for the first time, hi. My name is Precious Toju, a.k.a. The Structure Lady, a.k.a. Queen of Death Recovery. I'm a death recovery lawyer, insolvency practitioner, a credit risk analyst, an athlete mediator and a coach. Basically, I'm a debt recovery and credit risk coach. What I do is to help businesses and finance providers fix debt issues and avoid credit risk in business. And of course, I love to teach about debt recovery and credit risk management. I teach it to business owners, I teach it to finance providers, I teach it to debt recovery professionals. Okay, so my end goal at the end of the day is for businesses to be able to tackle debt issues independently. Okay, for business owners, especially SME CEOs, to be able to tackle debt issues independently by themselves before they can or should access to a debt recovery professionals. Okay, can this diamond leave my head from Facebook? But goodness me. <laughs> I don't know how you guys do all this future thing. Okay, so today I have a very interesting topic. So before I go there, I go right there. Um, so if you have not registered for the debt free webinar is coming up on sunday 7 pm west african time the essence of this webinar is to help those that are owing whether in business or personal capacity to teach them how to properly manage their debt issues to avoid public embarrassment mental depression escalation and bankruptcy and we are officially holding the webinar this Sunday by 7 p.m. So if you have not registered, the link is somewhere around this video. Is If you're on Instagram, it's in my bio. If you're on Facebook, check 
somewhere you will definitely find the link that's all i've been talking about in this month of january 2024 okay so for those that are joining me from the beginning welcome on board welcome to the third edition of ask lawyer precious friday where i get to respond to random questions that are asked whether via dm drop in my comment section or in the comment section of any of my social media handle or even when people send me a chat so this is when i offer free legal service so to say um when i offer free legal service online i don't offer free legal service one-on-one -on -one. if you call me one-on-one -on -one, you've got to pay but if you're online then definitely i can send um talk about a tip or two give you a legal or two insights about one or two things okay so for those that are joining me for the first time you're meeting me for the first time once again my name is precious toju aka the structure lady aka queen of debt recovery in africa yes <laughs> same with my food chest i'm a debt recovery lawyer an insolvency practitioner, a credit risk analyst, and an attorney mediator. Of course, I'm a debt recovery and credit risk coach. I help businesses and finance providers fix their debt issues and avoid credit risk in business. I do all of this through my legal services, legal training, and coaching program. So welcome once again to the third edition of Ask for Your Precious Friday. Today, I'm going to be responding to the question, um, what should I do or what can I do when served with a notice of the man. Hi, Gazi, welcome on board. That's the mother-in-law of business. <laughs> mother-in-law of business. Okay, so um, what should I do? So during the week, I, I did a post on what notice of demand is, why people should, why notice of demand are issued in the first place when it comes to debt recovery. And um, the consequences of notice of demand and somebody sent me a message on my instagram handle directly to my dm and asked so when i am served with a notice of demand what exactly should i do now the reason i left that out specifically when i was when i was writing that post was because i knew i was even going to talk about it you know doing this question and answer session so thankfully somebody has asked why is this thing on my head on Insta on Facebook? This diamond is on my head. <laughs> so specifically, um, I said I was going to talk about this specifically today during my live section. And thankfully, somebody asked. So, what exactly should you do when served with a notice of demand? As simple as this may sound, a lot of people do not really know what they should do when they have been served with a notice of demand. That is why a lot of people tend to shy away from it, dodge it, don't sign it, begin to argue unnecessarily, or just blow it off. So for those that have not read my content or what a notice of demand, I'm going to quickly run through my notes. A notice of demand is in debt recovery. So first I have to say that notice of demand is not only in debt recovery. You have notice of demand for different things. It could be that I want you to do certain things contract wise i would send you a demand later it could be that a landlord wants his tenant to do specifically something that he ought to do that he has refused to do he can send a letter or notice of demand to actually demand that you do that specific thing so when we hear notice of demand it applies to different things but in this instance i'm talking about a notice of demand in debt recovery okay that was simple so a notice of demand is a formal letter that is sent to a debtor that letter could be sent through the creditor or the lender or whoever you're owing money by rather by the creditor or lender or whoever you're owing money it could be sent through a debt recovery agency or a debt recovery lawyer or a lawyer to demand that you pay the money that you are owing within a specific time frame so a notice of demand is not vague. It is addressed specifically to you, stating the exact amount that you are owing, giving a little bit background of your debt, and asking you to pay within a specific time. And it will also detail what will happen to you if you do not comply 
with the notice of demand in debt recovery. And so when people refuse to receive a notice of demand, I often wonder why. Because you don't even know what they are asking you to do. You don't know within what time frame the demand letter is asking you to respond or comply. You don't even know if there is an error in that notice of demand which you can leverage that period. So when you do not even take a notice of demand in the first place, how do you know what has been demanded of you? How do you even know what next to do? So basically, in summary, a notice of demand in debt recovery is given to you when you are owing. And it can be issued by the person directly that you are owing or through its representative, which could be a debt recovery agency or a debt recovery lawyer. So let me just quickly read what I have here. I have a lot, but for the purpose of time, because I'll be out here soon. I said, so for those of you that like to ignore, dodge, or not sign a notice of demand, because in your minds, you think that you, you think that by so doing, you have evaded responsibilities or any legal liabilities. Please be notified that it is de it is a dangerous move and anyone that advises you contrary is only doing you more harm than good if you have taken a loan you must understand that it is not your money in the first place and you definitely owe a legal or civil duty to pay back anything short of this is a breach of contract which could be given different interpretations during debt recovery. So what I mean by all of that is when you're giving a notice of demand and you don't respond the way you should respond to that notice of demand, different interpretation can be given to it. So I was telling somebody that I'm trying to raise a community of responsible, responsive, and civil-minded debtors and creditors i'm trying to raise a community where creditors and debtors can coexist amicably can transact business in utmost professionalism and civility what i mean by all of this is you have to understand your right and duty as a debtor you also have to understand your rights and duties as a creditor so as a creditor, you need to understand that when you're issuing a notice of demand, it must be compliant with the law. It must have all the features, all the legal ingredients to make it legit. And as a debtor, you need to understand that when you're being served with a notice of demand, it is your civil duty and responsibility to receive it and comply with the demands. Because in the first place, a loan is never your money. So having said that, what exactly should you do when you are served with a notice of demand? I'll quickly, I'll quickly rush at it. Please just give me one minute, second to drink water. I don't know, my throat is dry today. Okay, what exactly should you do when you are served with a notice of demand? Now, before I go there, I said, in everything that you are doing, never ignore or blow off a notice of demand. So I said something last week about being scared of something. That one of the reasons people don't respond to a notice of demand is because they are scared. And I understand that. And I'll give a typical example. Something happened to me this week. I paid for something. I'm not going to be detailed. But I paid for something since last year, which was not... Um, I was supposed to get it within five to seven working days. I did not get it. And it's six months down the line. So I reach out, I've been reaching out to the person I paid the money to via WhatsApp, there was no response. I then sent a mail. Now, okay, that reminds me, a notice of demand can be served to you, you know, different, on different platforms, can, can be served to you in different ways. So it's not, it, it's not a must that it must be served to you physically. But there are a lot of things about notice of demand that I'm going to go further in teaching it during the Build the Debt Free Program, which is a six weeks legal training and business structure coaching for SMEs on how to avoid, recover, and manage debts in the business. So, like I was saying, so I sent an official mail demanding that that thing should be done and that the person that needs to do it should give me a time frame, a definite time frame when the thing is going to be delivered. If not, I was going to escalate the matter. And long story short, when we later spoke, We've settled anyway. 
And that's to tell you that disputes always come up in business, but how you handle it is what is important. I keep telling you people, being a debtor or owing money is not a crime. You are not a criminal. It's not an offense. However, you can make it an offense based on your body language, your conduct, and how you react to demands. So we got to settle, and then I asked the person, why didn't you respond to my mail? When you saw, she said, when she saw it, she didn't even know what to do. She didn't know what to say, that she was even afraid. A lot of debtors are on this table. Fear should not be part of it. It's okay to feel insecure sometimes, but you should never, my point is, you should never ignore a demand because, like I said, it can be given different interpretation. For people that are ahead, it's very hot. They can decide to come after you hot, hot. You get. So what exactly should you do when you are served with a notice of demand? First thing first, assess and receive it. Okay, or should I say receive and assess it? So they serve you a notice of demand. Okay? So you have to, because it will always come with an acknowledgement copy. There are a lot of things, there are a lot of things I'm going to expose me in the Build a Debt Free Business program. If you have not joined my way, I don't know what you are doing. So when they come with a notice of demand, it's definitely going to have the original and a photocopy, which is an acknowledgement. So you look at the acknowledgement and be sure that it is addressed to you. Okay? That it is bearing your name so that you know whether you are signing as the recipient of that letter or you are signing on behalf of somebody. But I'm actually talking to you now if you are, you know, you're the one who. So you receive it and assess it. Never ignore it. And when you assess and you see that it is actually written to you, you acknowledge it. And there is a proper way to acknowledge. You write your full name, you, you write the day, the time and you sign so a lot of people will feel oh they will use this against you in the in law you don't even know that when there is a mistake or where somebody is trying to play a fast one on you because you have properly acknowledged it they cannot because you already have your own copy let me give you an example so um i think it was a staff in the office that had an issue a tenancy issue or thereabouts or, or a client i can't really remember but somebody had a tenancy matter and they brought a notice to quit or it was even seven days and she acknowledged it and by the time they came it was a property that was bought you know sold out and by the time the new owner came the owner was claiming that the notice was served six months ago Whereas the notice was served on the tenant a month ago. And because she had acknowledged it, they cannot change it. They cannot forge it. Imagine if she did not acknowledge it. They will backdate it and do a lot of it. So most of the time in, in, in the process of thinking that you are smart and you are trying to act smart somebody, you are doing yourself more harm than good. So I'm not done. When you have received it, you assess it, you acknowledge it, you snap the copy that you have acknowledged and go with your original. Three things that you are going to do. First thing, I'm not going to talk about the remaining one. You received it, you receive your notice of demand, you assess it, you, you acknowledge it, what, you assess it to be sure that it is addressed to you and you are, you are to sign as you as a person. And so when you, as, when you assess it, you acknowledge it. Please ensure that you snap the one that you acknowledge. You must have a copy of the one. The, a copy of the one that you have is the original. And there is no you don't have your signature on it. But the one that you acknowledge, please snap it so that you can have evidence that this is the date I acknowledge it. Because you need to be mindful that the date or notice of the man is not, may not be the exact date that you receive it. Point taking. All right. You now check va validity and understand what your de the demand is. What do I mean by validity? You look at the background story of the notice of demand because every notice of demand must give a preview or an overview of the debt history. All right. So you look at the validity of the debt history. Is it accurate? The amount that they say you are owing, is that the amount you are owing? 
The date that they said you took the loan, is that the date that you took it? Do you understand? So when you run away from receiving a notice of demand, I don't understand. Because it's you doing it is it is against you, you're doing it against your own interests. So imagine that you are owing 50,000 and notice of demand says you are owing 500,000 and you did not receive it. Did you know that there are substantial means of serving you? They can paste it and go. And do you know that they are unscrupulous practices these days? They can paste it, snap it and remove it. So why would you... And before you begin to prove a lot of things, you would have spent money that you readily do not have. Because if you had the money, you would have paid, right? Uh -huh. I have five more minutes. I'm supposed to stop by. Right. Look, I'm, I'm not even done the third thing. <laughs> I'm not even talking about the third thing you should do. So you assess the validity of the content of your debt history to, ask, to determine whether the storyline is correct, the figures and the dates are accurate. Once you are done with that, and you see that everything is accurate, there are two things now. You see that it is accurate, you now sit down. Ah, it's true I can pay. How do I intend to pay? You now draft out a debt repayment plan. How do I want to pay? And then you reply to the notice of demand. Importantly, reply within the time frame that they gave you. Hey, now that they gave you notice of demand and say you have till today to reply, you are now replying in the month of March at your time, at your convenience. I always say a debtor is a slave to whoever he owes until he has paid all and everything that he is owing. For those that are Christians, the Bible says that when you are owing somebody, Settle with the person before the person takes you to court. Because when he takes you to court, you will, do, you will pay everything that you have. What does that mean? That the person that you are owing decides your life. Whether you are going to sleep at the police station today or you will sleep in your house. It's very important. Reply to the notice of demand. And there are two ways to reply. You can reply by yourself or you can apply using a debt recovery lawyer. How? So people are like asking me now, how do I reply by myself? What should I write? What should I now write? Why have you not joined my work list for build a debt-free business? So that you become and learn these things in and out. The last thing you will do is to ensure that your creditor or whoever sent you notice of demand receives the notice of demand. And you must have evidence of the receipts. Ensure that you get acknowledgement. The same way you acknowledge their own. Ensure that they acknowledge your own. And then you can, then from there, you begin to, you know, start negotiation. So, let me run through it again. When you are served with a notice of demand, I said never do what? Never blow it off. Blow it off in the sense that never ignore it, never refuse to acknowledge it. When you when you are served with a notice of demand, receive it, assess it, acknowledge it, have a copy of your acknowledgement, assess the, the validity of your notice of demand, draw out a debt repayment plan, respond within the time frame, respond through your lawyer or by yourself, and most importantly, you know, serve whoever issued you the notice of demand and ensure that you have a copy or an evidence of your delivery and then negotiation will start from there you can see that if you do like this you will have peace of mind not the one that your phone will ring and your heart will be pumping your heart will be beating hey is it the people that wear me is it quick loan i'll be quick credit what do we call it is it is it a uh, xyz yoto yoto bank or a j a j j j microfinance bank? your heart is skipping your heart is skipping respond that is not a crime. If you do not borrow, how will microfinance bank grow? How will money lenders make money? How will bank make money? They make money through you. So you are, you are a gold to them. The earlier you understand that, the better. However, 
how you now respond to your debt issues is what matter the most all right thank you so much the time is up if you know you have gained something today just say okay just drop just drop an emoji a love a smile a thumbs up just drop something in the comment section once again this sunday is the debt free webinar the debt free webinar is i hold it only once in a year and it's this sunday if you have not signed up for it please um click the link in my bio to sign up to register for the debt free webinar if you are currently owing you will learn how to properly manage your debt issues and i i am here to announce to you that the portal for the debt build a debt free business online course is open for the waitlist so just click to join the waitlist and get notifications on when portal will be open for registration for the next month. Thank you guys for having me. I remain precious. Told you, aka the structure lady, aka queen of debt recovery. I am committed to changing the narratives of debt recovery and credit risk management in Africa. See you next week, Friday, for another Ask for Your Precious Friday. Bye. And God bless you.